So we did a quick look at Photoshop for the iPad last week on the morning before it came out and I thought everyone was going to be super impressed and super excited about this. But as you've probably heard, the comments and reviews have not been great. If we look through some of our comments, um, you can see what I mean. Our friend Spiros here, great YouTube channel. Um, there's no way I'm using this. I can't believe Adobe released this app. It's ridiculously underbaked. I get they stated it's version one with aggressive updates to come, but this is basically useless, especially compared to Affinity Photo for iPad. Next, Nick Nimmin, great YouTube channel too. Disappointed there are not any shape tools. Pat David Music, yikes. Adobe promised so much and delivered so little. Alfredo, straight up garbage. And then Muzz, after 20 years as an Adobe user, I'm so disappointed by Adobe that I have no affinity to the product anymore. So I wanted to do a full review of Photoshop for the iPad when it first came out. But as you've probably seen online, there is just a ton of bad press for this first version of Photoshop. So I'm gonna do basically a different version of this review. I'm gonna show you all the things I think are really good and all of the things I think are really bad. So let's jump into it. Okay, so first of all, let's go through some of the things I like about this new Photoshop for iPad. Well, firstly, as you'll see here, it looks like Photoshop does on the desktop. Okay, yes, we're missing a few things at the moment, but the user interface looks very, very nice. Uh, it's designed well for the iPad screen. I'm using the iPad Pro 10.5 inch. Now let's first look at the kind of uh, selection tools. So first of all, if we double tap this, this is how you get to your secondary tools. You can see here we've got the lasso, the quick selection, uh, and your rectangle tools. So, you know, I'm gonna get the Apple Pencil here, and let's just draw around this runner. The Apple Pencil is really nice using the Apple Pencil. Um, I'm just gonna do this very, very quickly. Now what I've seen on a few reviews already is people saying you can't actually refine at all your selection, and this isn't the case. I think a lot of people have missed this out, but if we make a selection there, and let's say we get to this part of this t-shirt where the, where we've kind of missed out a section of the t-shirt, you can actually add um, to the selection by just simply drawing around it again, and that will add to the selection. Now, let's say you know, you're happy with that, and for argument's sake, let's say we want to take out the hair. Uh, there's a little shortcut button on here, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, but you can see when you hold it down, it says subtract. So I can draw around this, and you can see here, if I just draw around that, it's gonna subtract the hair there. So uh, it might take a few goes, but essentially you can refine your selection. You can't do it a great deal. There's, there's not um, all of the advanced features you would find in the desktop version, but it is possible to some degree. Secondly, if we just deselect that, what I like about this version of Photoshop is they're bringing over the keyboard shortcuts, which of course we're a big fan of. So you'll see here that uh, if you've got a smart keyboard attached or a wireless keyboard, V will access move, you've got N for transform, L for lasso, W quick select, and so on. So it's really great they're bringing the editor's key shortcuts over to the iPad version, which is really, really cool. Thirdly, let's talk about this new shortcut button. So in the bottom left of the screen here, you can see this shortcut button. Now, a few people have missed this out. This is essentially a very good tool. So you can use it in a number of ways. So let's say I use the paintbrush tool. I can paint with it. And then if I hold it down, it will turn into an erase. And you can see it's erasing the section, uh, the selection there. I should have uh, duplicated that layer. So let's just... Uh, undo what I just did there. Let's duplicate this layer. Schoolboy error there. But uh, essentially now if I um, paint onto that layer, I can hold the shortcut button down and then erase and it works pretty well. You can also use it a little bit like a joystick and you can pull it off to the center, uh, to the left or the right, and you'll see it changes to the eyedropper tool. So let's do that again. If I hold it down, it, it's erase. To the left, it's now the eyedropper tool. So I can say select that pink and then if I go back to painting, you'll see it changes to that pink color. So I'm a big fan of the shortcut dial button. I think that's gonna be very handy, especially as there isn't mouse support yet on the iPad. Next, it's uh, the zoom function. So if you grab your finger or Apple Pencil and you just simply drag left and right 
along the top toolbar, you'll see that it will zoom in and out very, very smoothly, which is really nice to see. Now, as mentioned, I'm not gonna go through every single feature in this review, um, just because there really aren't a lot of features at the moment to review. So what I'm gonna go through is some of the things that I, I know are annoying people, they're annoying me. And uh, first of all, there are no curved shadows and highlights. So let's say I brought this image in. Um, you know, okay, there are, you know, you can add clip adjustments here and you can do things like brightness and contrast, but you know, they're very limited. I, shadows and highlights is what, what I tend to use a lot. Uh, and there isn't any of that here. You've just got literally a brightness and a contrast slider. And that's it, you know, you can blend the opacity. Um, if you scroll down to here, it's missing effects and it's missing smart filters as well. So you are quite limited even in the photography editing section of Photoshop. Secondly, if we hide the layers and settings, if we add some text, I thought, okay, well, this is good enough for me on the go to create a thumbnail. So I'm gonna create a bit of text here. I'm gonna say test video. What's cool is we can change the font, that's pretty great, okay? We can change the color just like we would on the desktop. Let's uh, select all of that, we can change the color to a nice red color. We can create the, uh, change the size. We've got paragraph options and things like that. But again, they're very limited to, compared to the desktop version. But what is annoying, you know, I was gonna create this for thumbnails. For me, that was gonna be enough to use this on the go. But the problem is there's no drop shadows at the moment. Um, there's no outlines, there's, there's nothing that you would normally expect from the text layers within Photoshop. So that is a little bit disappointing at the moment. I'm gonna click done on that. Next up is if we go back to the homepage and let's say we wanna create a new, docu new document, you'll notice down here on the right hand side, color mode RGB. If you tap that, you'll say, yes, we know color mode is important, we're working on it. So this means essentially if you are someone who uses Photoshop for any kind of print work at all, where you need to print in CMYK. At the moment, you're not gonna be able to do that. So at the moment, it's only really useful if you create web or, or video imaging. At the moment, there is no raw photo support. So if you're using raw photography, you can't at the moment import raw photos to edit within Photoshop. And I think that's a huge mistake because you know it's called Photoshop, it's where you wanna edit your photos. I would have liked Adobe to in include that for the first version because that was one area that I was really looking forward to, to, to using basically uh, for thumbnails. Again, I thought if I could create a thumbnail, we could take a photo, I can add some texts, some outlines, some shadows. I'd be happy with that for version one, but you cannot import for images. There's no magic wand tool in here, which uh, a few people have asked for in the comments. There isn't any ability at the moment to bring your own brushes. Um, so you'll see down here, you've got a, you know a few options already of brushes and that's great to see, I do like that. But at the moment, you don't have any ability to import your own brushes. The selection tools are also very limited. As mentioned, there's only the lasso tool there. And one big issue for me is that you can't rotate a canvas at all. So you can see I'm trying to pinch and rotate that and it's just not possible to rotate a canvas at all. Now, if we click on the home button and you go to suggest features, you can see some of the things that are coming to Photoshop very soon. So I'm very excited to see some of these. Rotate canvas, as I just mentioned, is coming. Shapes and paths, bring your own brushes, adjusting curves, color swatches, fonts, bringing your own fonts, that's super important, smart objects, grids and guides, and more. So I'm very, very hopeful about the future of Photoshop on the iPad. Um, I do like this version of Photoshop for the iPad, but it's just not quite where it needs to be. So there we go, that's my roundup of Photoshop for the iPad, the good and the bad. But what do you think? I'd love to hear from you. I do think personally that Adobe should have maybe released this as a free version for maybe six months while they were sort of releasing the updates because it is a little underbaked. I don't think really any professional can use this 
properly uh, as a main tool for photo editing or sort of graphic design. I think you can, of course, use it as a companion app at the moment, but it's just missing so many fundamental tools. For me, I tried to do a thumbnail and I couldn't even add a drop shadow to the text. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm a big, big fan of Adobe. I love their products. And I think in six months time, this is gonna be all forgotten about. This is gonna be potentially one of the best uh, photography apps for the iPad, hands down, because the UI is great. It works and performs really well. And you know, it's run by Adobe. They're gonna put the, the money and development into this. So I'm really looking forward to the future of this app, but let me know what you think in the comments section below. Oh yeah, and if you wanna see the new features in Photoshop 2020 for the Mac or PC, then you can check out that video by clicking up here or checking out the link in the description below. So thanks for watching. Make sure to give us a subscribe, a like, and smash that notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.